Jack or Jill of all trades, master of none. I love this idiom, this expression. And I learned that that's only part of it. That's the part that I learned and knew and heard my whole life. But there's an addition to this Jack of all trades or Jill of all trades, master of none. It says, but oftentimes better than a master of one. This good idiom, this expression, this proverb dates back to the 14th century. And it appeared in a poem by John Gowan called Confessio, as well as Robert Greene's Green's Ghost's Worth of Wit or something published in 1592. Uh, it was a collection of common sayings and things that people, um, expressions people use. And obviously for hundreds of years, people have been collecting common phraseology. Words and communication and the things that we say are very important. But this one has to deal with how much it, it was originally intended to be a compliment, but like anything else, human beings can twist it to make it be a not compliment, right? We can take anything and we can put a, a good spin or a bad spin on it. We do that every day, each and every one of us. So Jack of all trades, master of none, is meant to mean that you're a generalist versus a specialist. You're really, really good at a lot of different things, but you don't focus on any one thing. Experts focus, generalists uh, are good at a lot of things. Now, the, the best thing about being a jack of all trades and um, the most important skill that any of us can have is knowing how to learn, having the ability to learn. Well, if somebody is good at a lot of things, they obviously have mastered how to learn how to do different things because none of us are born with all these skills and abilities, right? And I was thinking of Barbie, which is why I started with this little teeny Barbie today. Uh, if you think of Barbie versus G.I. Joe, Barbie has had like 100 or I don't know, 175, maybe 200 different professions. And she can be, and she's supposedly an expert at all of them, by the way, which I tend to think is hilarious. But every costume she wears, every activity she does, every interest she has, every version of a Barbie or Stacy or Barbie and friends with their different professions and skills and abilities, there's, there's tons of them. She's a generalist in my mind. G.I. Joe, on the other hand, if you, I'm, I'm from a family of all girls, but we still know what G.I. Joes were. G.I. Joes were always soldiers, right? They might have different costumes, different uniforms, be different military arms, but they were always a soldier. G.I. Joe is a soldier. And then there's G.I. Jane, because she was a soldier too, and there's movies about it. But to me, that exemplifies and really shows the difference between a generalist and a specialist. A jack of all trades, I would consider Barbie a jack of all trades, given that she can have all these different professions. And I would consider G.I. Joe a specialist, an expert, a focused person, not necessarily a jack of all trades. Now, he might be a jack of all trades with respect to his area of focus or the military, but he's not a, probably a jack of all trades in all things. I think of and we're going to do a little activity today. I'm going to challenge everybody to rate yourself on your Jack or Jill abilities, your ability to be a Jack of all trades or a Jill of all trades. On a scale of one to 10, being a Jack of all trades or Jill of all trades, a, a 10 means you're good at a ton of things. And you're, um, and maybe you consider that in your area of focus, totally up to you. Because a lot of us in business and in the world, pick a career, pick an industry, stay in that industry and focus on that. That would be a, a one. If you've only ever been in one industry, if you're only good at one thing, if you're a musician and you've only ever been a musician from the time you were young and that's, that's how you earn your living, I would consider that a a, you know, one, two, three, whatever, however you want to rate the scale. It's just for your, uh, your own fun, I guess, your own edification. But um, people that then are generalists and can do a lot of things. I think of the CEO is, in my mind, a generalist, right? They are a jack of all trades. They have to understand and be able to relate to everybody in the organization, especially when your your business is small and new. This is about supersizing and growing your business. Well, when you are just starting out, you usually, I know I had to be a jack of all trades, a Jill of all trades. You had to be able to put on many hats and do many things in order to help your business grow and, and thrive. You had to be flexible and flow to whatever needed to be done to make sure that your business continued in the direction you wanted it to. But as it grows, you can hire help and get more specialized knowledge in the different areas and aspects that are important to your business and your industry. So more and more people that you bring on are 
experts in their area of expert if in their area of running a business or being involved in the business and they would be considered less flexible not so much jills of the trade now i think of as I'm, I'm thinking about this scale i'm like okay where would i be on this scale i'm probably about a seven right i'm i'm probably about a seven because simply because I've been involved in a lot of different industries. Now, one thing I learned early on in my career is that a lot of the skills and abilities like knowing how to learn are transferable from one industry to the next. And so I chose to make that my career path in corporate America and pretty much my career path as an entrepreneur as well and as a business owner. It's fun for me to learn about different industries and be involved just with people in different areas and aspects of business. So I'm, but if when it comes to life, I would say with respect to business, I'm very focused. And so then I'd be probably a two or a three with respect to businesses and operations and systems and processes and procedures and how I think about them. But as far as overall in my life, I would say I'm probably a seven. Now I think of two of my brother-in-laws and I won't name them. They know who they are, but one of them, definitely a jack of all trades. He is good at freaking everything, anything you can imagine, any topic you ask him about, he can give you practically a dissertation on. He's He knows everything. He's kind of a know-it-all because he knows it all. He knows a lot about a lot of things. And then my other brother-in-law is an amazing professional. He's, he's an absolutely brilliant attorney and fisherman and the things that he's interested in, but not what you would call a handy guy. I think of handy men, handy women as jack of all trades. Um, he's on sort of the, op, not the, op, yeah, probably the opposite end of the spectrum. So I think of those two and I'm like kind of in the middle of, of them. You know, I know a lot, a little bit about a lot of stuff. I don't know a ton about a lot of stuff. And most of my life has been focused in certain areas that I'm interested in, manufacturing, quality, uh, operations. Uh, there's a key core group of skills and, and things that I'm really interested in. So I'm always studying and learning and growing about them. But what you need for your business and for you and your personal development is entirely up to you. Uh, depends on what your goals are and what you want for your business and your life, whether you need specialized knowledge or not. But I've found as our businesses grow, we need to become more of a generalist and less of a specialist. Love to know your opinion. Love to know how you rate yourself on the scale of one to 10 for Jack and Jill abilities. That would be fun. Uh, and I'll be with you, of course, tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your life right now? Do you want to be a Barbie or do you want to be a G.I. Joe? I guess that's our question today. And you get to choose. You get to be whatever you want. All right. Have an awesome day.